What's up, everybody? It's Alex Plink with Dallas Sports Fanatic, and I'm here with the 2018 Tom Grave Minor League Player of the Year for the Texas Rangers. Rangers outfielder slash first baseman Scott Heineman, Oregon Ducks alum. How's it going, Scott? Hey, Alex. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Scott is thankfully able to join us uh, from the bright sides of California. So, is it the uh, south side? of Cali, like around the Los Angeles area? Yeah, south side. I'm right uh, pretty close to Santa Monica Pier. Nice, nice. So how are things going in uh, quarantine? I know we've had an off season, then we had a mini spring training, or you can call it spring training one, and mm -hmm. then we have another off season, essentially. And yeah. whether how long that's going to last, who knows? I know Major League Baseball and MLBPA have been really working on ending this uh, un planned off season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, obviously not where we want to be. We wish we were out there playing, uh, in front of fans and, uh, getting to do what we love to do every day. But, um, you know, really just, uh, got back during this quarantine and, uh, with the mindset of controlling what I can control. And, uh, so, you know, obviously I'm, I'm at my parents' place right now, so it's great to spend quality time with them, uh, time that I wouldn't normally have. Uh, and usually in the off season when they're both working, uh, we're all out of the house at the same time. So um, for us to get to share this quality time um, is pretty amazing. Uh, and then also just trying to take advantage of the time too, uh, where really there aren't too many distractions. You know, there aren't uh, movie theaters to go to or, you know, not too much to do outside of the house. So um, other than staying quarantined, uh, I, we have a private facility we're lucky to have um, that is set up through a couple of buddies of mine where we can get our baseball work in. Uh, we can get everything that we need uh, to stay ready. And so really just trying to take advantage of the time. You know, we'll, I have the luxury of having my brother uh, as my workout partner. So we'll meet up at the complex. Um, and really, even if there's not too much uh, to do that day, say we've been pushing it pretty hard. Uh, still, we don't want to go home just yet, just because we know, um, you know, we're home the rest of the day. So uh, we'll set like a timer for maybe four or so hours where we just find creative things to do. And uh, whether that's hand-eye coordination drills or uh, just, you know, talking baseball, um, you know, we're, we're just trying to stay creative and uh, keep it, you know, fun. Hey, you know, anything you can do to pass the time. And I kind of want to take a little bit of a, a timeline on here because this off season was such a big off season for you. Finally made your major league debut in August uh, against the, um, so you got your first big league hit. You got your first big league homer. I know offensively it wasn't the route you wanted to take, but coming into spring training, how, what was the mindset like? Was there any, was it just do what you can or was there, obviously the ultimate goal is to make, the roster coming into opening day, but what, what was the major mindset going in? Yeah. So, I mean, I have very high expectations for myself. Um, and I still truly believe that I'm just, uh, you know, tapping the potential that I have and like, just, um, you know, hitting the surface right now. And, uh, once everything kind of lines up, I feel like I'll be more where I want to be just as an everyday player and a uh, productive player in the big leagues. But, um, yeah, last year was awesome uh, to get a taste of the big leagues uh, and, and get to spend some time up there. Um, I think you going into that uh, environment, you know, you're told and you're given so much great advice about uh, the things that are going to be thrown at you and, um, you know, really not to, to overthink it. Just it's, it's, it is another game. Obviously there's a bigger crowd and um, the games are on TV. So there's, more there but um like you're good enough to be at this level the triple a uh pitching uh is you know the talent in triple a is great too um and so really you'll just see it's more fine-tuned in the big leagues but um even though you're told all that stuff there is still that that feeling that creeps in um of like do i belong here and uh you know i want to be at this level? Um, like, can I make an impact? And so I feel like I put a lot of pressure on myself and, and overworked. Um, and so, uh, I didn't, you know, have the statistics that I wanted to coming into the off season, but I was very fortunate to have gone through it because I got to experience a lot. So, uh, 
kind of making a long story short, this, this off season was season was more predicated on uh, trying to become the best baseball player I can be rather than um, fully invest in getting as strong as I can be where that is very important too. And uh, like my workouts, um, you know, uh, in the past have always been like, okay, how bulked up can I get? Can I kind of like just be a, a bodybuilder type guy? Whereas um, this off season, it was more, uh, you know, I want to get as quick as I can. Um, I want to do everything that I do in the weight room. I want to make sure uh, is going to help me on the field. And so that was the mindset. And then having had uh, the taste of the big leagues last year, coming into this spring, it was more like, okay, I'm here. I belong. I know I can play at this level. Um, and now it's time to, you know, make a name for myself and do whatever I can to help this team win. Um, but like, ultimately that starts with making the team and making an impression and, uh, you know, putting up some numbers in spring. Was there an initial plan position wise? I know more talks were about outfield, but I mean, I would say outfield slash first baseman, I'm doing research on there. I mean, defensively, there was only two players last year who locked in 196 innings all season with at least 36 innings in the infield and the outfield. Two players did not commit an mm -hmm. error at all in either side. Sean Rodriguez mm -hmm. of the Philadelphia Phillies and the man I'm talking to right now, Scott Heidemann. <laughs> so was there a plan? Were they going to put you more so in the outfield or were there still going to be time at first base? So the plan going into this year, obviously with the additions of uh, Todd Frazier um, and, and Greg Bird and, and a few others, uh, the plan when I met with Woody in – uh, the beginning of spring training was that I was going to get used at all three outfield spots. Um, and the best thing that I love about Woody, and, and I'll tell you, uh, you know, just straight up, because that's how he tells his players, you know, he's very straightforward with them, is uh, he doesn't beat around the bush. He doesn't tell you exactly what you want to hear, uh, but he tells you the truth. And so um, I've always respected that. When I, when I had uh, my meeting with him in spring training, uh, he said, look, right now, um, I don't have you penciled in in the starting lineup. He's like, uh, now, like, you got a great chance at making this team, um, but you're not penciling in the starting lineup. So our plan is to use you in all three outfield spots because uh, your role right now, if we broke with the team, if you broke with the team, would be uh, that late inning defensive replacement. Maybe that guy who comes off the bench, uh, steals a bag, uh, pinch hit at bat late. One of those things. So. Uh, he wanted to make sure I was comfortable with all three positions in the outfield um, in case uh, I was replacing any one of them late in the game where the game's on the line. Um, and so he told me that straight up. He said, you can, you can, you know, change our minds. Like if you go out and kill it this spring, like you can earn a starting spot. Uh, but this is a situation right now. So don't be, um, don't be like uh, taken back when uh, I don't have you like in center in all these spring games and I have some other guys there and I'm working you in right field and I'm working left field. It's just, there's a plan behind it. And so I was, you know, very happy to have that conversation with them. Um, the first base we, we kind of put on the back burner. Like I wasn't taking any ground balls there just because uh, I told them that um, if there was a chance for me to win a starting spot, like I wanted to do whatever I could and I wanted to fully invest in that. So um, first base, uh, we actually really didn't talk about, like, I'm always open to, to playing it. Uh, I played third base and first base at Oregon. So, uh, like if, if that gets me in the lineup, you know, I'm full go and I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to, uh, put in the work and make sure that, uh, you know, I'm a successful defensive player over there. That's exactly what a lot of players that I talked to last year about Chris Woodward. He is straight to the point and he is, he's even like that with me straight to the yeah. point will tell you exactly as it is and I would as a player and even as a human being you appreciate that because I, I'm sure as a player you don't want to be like oh you're going to be in the starting role and then you're never in and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. you start questioning whereas you're not going to get your I mean you're not going to be in the starting role you're going to feel like you know I know what I know what I have to do and I know that there's mm -hmm. a shot on there but I know that here's where I stand right now Here's where I stand with you. Here's where I stand with the organization. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate that from there. I know from talking 
uh, from other players who've had previous managers and even top-notch managers. Talking to like Hunter Pence, who's worked with Bruce Boshi, Lance Lynn, talking mm -hmm. with Tony Larusa. So that's, mm -hmm. that's one thing is a consensus on the organization. And that's something that really is a type of personality that not a lot of people understand how good that is. I feel like, especially in a manager role. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been very fortunate to have some great managers uh, coming up, you know, with uh, Howard Johnson, Joe Mikulik, Jason Wood. Um, but, yeah, it's so crucial to me uh, to know exactly where you stand. And, um, you know, my brother, uh, you know, I'm not going to obviously, you know, talk too much about his route and stuff like that. But he, uh, when we talk, you know, he hasn't always experienced the same things where you don't really know exactly uh, your position on the team or where you stand and uh, whether it's good or bad. Like I would always rather know um, exactly what my position is. So that way uh, I can continue to work and, and build from it. Um, even if that meant like Woody, you know, saying, Hey, right now we have you going to rookie ball. It's like, okay, at least I know where I am. Now let's move on and let's keep it working. So um, just the fact that he's always up front, uh, he never beats around the bush uh, is, you know, that's why he's a great leader. And uh, I think obviously um, I think, you know, we're going to do great things moving forward just uh, under his tutelage. I have a little bit of a question for you as far as a mindset goes. So the week before everything got canceled, Willie Calhoun took a really nasty shot to the cheek, sort of in, and obviously the first concern is going to be how Willie is doing. And mm -hmm. the fact that right now you're seeing how he is, is just downright amazing, considering mm -hmm. it could have been a lot worse. But Willie is a left fielder. Your mm -hmm. role, as, as stated, is maybe when you're making the club as a, a backup outfielder. Was there any mindset into that? Because as a young player, you get your opportunities through more often than not, unfortunately, injuries to other players. And that's how mm -hmm. Willie got his shot last year. Injury to Elvis Andrews, they called him up because he earned it, and he raked. So was yeah. there any sort of mindset on that, or did that completely get drawn out with the concern for a teammate? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, it's you, you hit it on the head because um, – you know, it's unfortunate and maybe fortunate because it brings out the best in us. But um, we, we play a sport where uh, we're competing against our family members pretty much. I mean, we spend more time with these guys than we do our own family. So uh, it's pretty amazing to think that we are competing against each other to be in a position where we ultimately want to be. Or maybe I shouldn't say competing against. We're competing with each other um, because that brings out the best within each other. And then ultimately that's going to bring the best, uh, out in the team. But yeah, when I saw, you know, Willie go down, uh, obviously that was really hard to watch. Uh, it was a couple years ago when Howard Johnson took the line drive, uh, in the phase two where I was standing next to him in, uh, the dugout. So that was the first time I'd ever seen something like that. And then to see it happen to Willie, uh, it was really, it was really tough um, for a few days for sure. Uh, just because um, I played with them for two years now uh, or just over two years, I've seen how hard he's worked uh, to put himself in the position that he's earned. Uh, so I'm very happy for him like that, you know, he's in that position cause he deserves it. Um, but once we got the news that it wasn't too bad, it was a very big sigh of relief uh, just because immediately when that happens, you, you know, you think about the individual, you just hope that, uh, he's going to be okay and that um, there's no permanent damage or anything like that, especially we didn't know where it hit him, if it got in the eye or something like that. So uh, the best possible case uh, came out of it where, you know, it was just a fractured jaw. Uh, he was going to be out for a little, but then he's going to be back. So um, really when that happens, you know, you're always there for the guy uh, and you want to support him. And then, the, the mindset is just next man up, you know, obviously uh, Willie's not forgotten and um, he's going to be, you know, working his way back uh, to get himself in the best position uh, 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 to play. And uh, during that time, you know, that's another opportunity for another guy to step up, make a name for himself, uh, maybe solidify a role the way Willie did, like you said, when he came up and he raked. So uh, really it goes back to the controlling what you can control and, 
you never know when your time's going to come. So you always got to be ready. And like we talked about, whether that's, uh, you know, playing the outfield in the minors uh, your whole career. And then all of a sudden they're telling you, Hey, you're going to get called up and play first base. And you're like, I haven't played first base. And they're like, Hey, we're going to give you eight games in triple a, you better be ready. You know, it's, it's always just about being ready. Uh, Cause you never know when your opportunity is going to come. You never want it to come uh, with someone else going down, but um, you know, when opportunity strikes, obviously you're looking to take advantage. Let's shift it to a little bit of the Heinemann duo because Let's go a little bit in a positive direction. So uh, one of the things I was asking Tony on this, um, so one of the things, because on the 11th of March, you and Tyler both in the starting lineups. So mm-hmm. you come up to the plate. Tyler's behind the plate. First of all, did he say anything to you? Uh, it's funny because all – uh, coming up, all I hear from my teammates is how much my brother's a chatterbox and like how he tries to talk to them and get them out of their routine. And yet when I come up, he doesn't have much to say ever. Uh, so I always initiate it. I'm just like, you know, what's up, bro? And maybe uh, like a pitch goes by and he tries to frame it and it's a ball. And I talk a little heat. I'm like, come on, man, don't try and frame that. And then the ump kind of gives me a look, like a weird look. I'm like, don't worry, he's my brother. And he's like, oh, okay, it's all good. But, um, yeah, really we keep it light. Uh, it's funny, you know, with technology, like we're texting each other before the game. So it's literally like we've kept in contact, you know, 30 minutes before the game. It's just seeing each other uh, for a split second, like while we play. It's pretty cool. Did you, uh, you hit two homers. You hit one. Did you give him some crap about that? Uh, oh, yeah. For sure. I mean, um, even when we're working right now, uh, <laughs> it's funny. I'll, I'll bring Trevor Plouffe into this just because, uh, you yeah, know, when he was playing, yeah, <laughs> when, when he was playing and we were working out together in the off season, um, whoever got to go first in any exercise or any hitting, anything like that was always based on how much service time you had. And so um, not by the stats, but by service time. And, so even now, uh, anytime I can take advantage, you know, uh, when I'm getting ready to hit and I'm like, hey, who wants to hit front toss first? Uh, Tyler always has to say me because I have more service time than him. So uh, it's always nice to, you know, make little jokes like that and just keep it fun. So was that game the first time you two were on a field uh, professionally? Uh, because I know in 2018, Tyler was in the Brewers camp. Mm-hmm. But did you guys – uh, face off against or played together at that point or because uh, last year he was with the Diamondbacks and then 2017 it was in Florida yeah. with the Astros yeah uh, so actually um, that was the first time we stepped foot on a major on a major league field together uh, even if spring training if that counts obviously we haven't stepped foot on uh, you know where it really matters um, yet but before that the first time we had played against each other uh, in pro ball was uh in 2019 when I was with Nashville um and Tyler was with uh New Orleans uh in the Miami uh, Marlins organization so uh I was I was feeling pretty good I was on a good streak um and in both series that we played them I think they were short like three game series where he might have DH a couple times and he caught two of them uh one at home and one on the road and I had good series in both of them um, but, uh, the games that he was behind the plate, I actually had my worst game in terms of the amount of hits, but I homered in both games. I think I went like one for five and then, uh, I went like one for four. Whereas in the other games, I was like two for three, two for four, something like that. Uh, but since I hit, uh, homers in both them, he took some heat by his teammates, you know, thinking like, oh, I was getting the pitches or something like that. So that was a lot of fun. Uh. And my parents made it out to that series, which was pretty cool. Nice, nice. And that that's, <laughs> I mean, sometimes brotherhood brings in the best of you. So, I mean, I, yeah. I know being, and I'm well represented too, being a little brother myself. I think Tyler's like two, three months uh, older than me. So. Oh, you can, really? Uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So you can make fun of him when he hits his 30s. Because he'll make <laughs> it before you. Cool. I know. That's the best. How old's your brother? 
Uh, he is 31. Oh, nice. Very cool. So, yeah, very uh, close in age. But, you know, your brother's always, always dominate. Oh, yeah. I hear what anybody says. That's true. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Uh, well, and here's the other thing is that with the new MLB proposal, and we won't get into too nitty-gritty on there, but one of the nice things is that since Tyler is with the Giants organization, one of the proposals is in the half 80-82 80, 80 to 82 game season, American League, National League, AL West versus NL West. So there could be a chance. The Heinlein yeah. brothers on a major league field this yeah. year. Is that when you and heard – I don't know if you heard that – that news recently as far as how they were going to gather that together, but did that kind of make you feel, cause that wasn't supposed to happen until next year uh, as far as mm -hmm. the rotation goes of interleague. Yeah. Well, uh, so there's been, you know, so many things that are thrown around right now where uh, it's like hard to keep track of. So unless something's set in stone, like I, I just try and stay away from it. But um, yeah, when we heard that was a possibility, obviously, uh, you know, that would be a dream come true to step foot on the same field together. Um, <laughs> we, we always joke with our dad because, uh, you know, obviously this year um, when we play, there's going to be no fans, but he said he's going to find some way to get in that stadium. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that could be uh, put, you know, out there in the public just because, no, but um, yeah, he, uh, that would be obviously incredible. And uh, yeah, that would be, you know, there's no words to describe uh, how how cool that would be. Oh man, is there any um, when the eleventh hit, and I assume your folks were there for that? Or were uh, they? Actually, no, they weren't. They 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 came out uh, earlier in spring um, and got to see us play like uh, you know just uh, separately. But um, no, they weren't out there for that one. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, you know, during the season, we'll, we'll see what happens. Maybe they'll schedule the Giants-Rangers games later in the year when fans will be able to come in. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, that, that, would be, that would be pretty cool. All right, well, Scott, it was a pleasure talking with you. I really appreciate the time. Is there anything else you want to, uh, want to bring out? Uh, thank you for having me. And then I want to give you some credit for, uh, for going four for four with me on, uh, PS4 and then will be the show against Chris Sale. That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Dude, it's amazing. Like, I mean, I go to the other way. I wish the power was a little bit better. I feel like they didn't <laughs> quite get the power. They don't get a lot of things right. I'll be honest with you as far as stats go in that game. But, uh, no, man, like for whatever reason, put you at the top spot in the lineup. I know, yeah. I know, uh, it sounds kind of weird, but like first spot in the lineup, boom, go the other way. You go the other way a lot. So yeah. you have a good uh, contact to the opposite field. I'll take that. That's why, no, I want to make sure uh, we get out there, um, obviously when it's safe, uh, but I want to make sure we get out there ASAP so that I can change uh, the MLB, the show, people's minds uh, about my power. Because I've played with myself a couple times and I've gotten perfect, perfect. Uh, and, you know, it's a, just a long, lazy fly ball to center. So I'm like, okay, this has got to change. I got I to gotta put something else in their minds. I, you know, I got I to gotta prove to them that uh, I'm a little bit more powerful than what they got me at in uh, 2020. I'll say this. You're one of, like, <laughs> three players that the AI actually throws the first over. You, Santana, and Solak. For whatever reason, the AI doesn't throw over first for anybody else except you three. And go figure. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Scott, thank you so much. That's Scott Heineman of the Texas Rangers. I'm Alex Plink of Dallas Sports Fanatic. Thank you so much.